Hi, my name is Lisa Shapiro. I'm a professor of philosophy at Simon Fraser University. I'm providing a brief introduction to Princess Elizabeth of Bohemia, her life and family background, her correspondence with Descartes from 1643, with a little peek at the rest of their correspondence. Elizabeth Simon von Pallant was born in 1618 in Prague. She was the daughter of Frederick V of Bohemia and Elizabeth Stuart of England. The marriage of her parents was celebrated as a momentous occasion, the union of two European Protestant fa ruling families. Elizabeth's mother, Elizabeth Stuart, was the daughter of James I of England. Her mother's brother, Elizabeth's uncle, was Charles I, the ruler of England during its civil war in the mid-1640s. Elizabeth's father, Frederick V, became King of Bohemia after the Holy Roman Emperor, Ferdinand II, was unseated through events that have come to be known as the defenestration of Prague. Frederick came to be known as the Winter King. He ruled Bohemia for only one season as a series of miscalculations led to his losing the throne in events that are taken to have started the Thirty Years' War, a war between Protestants and Catholics that ravaged Europe. Elizabeth was impressive, as will soon be clear. However, it's also worth noting some achievements of her siblings. Charles Lewis, her older brother, was responsible for rehabilitating the University of Heidelberg after the Thirty Years' War. Louise Hollandine, Elizabeth's sister, was an accomplished painter who trained with the Dutch master Garrett von Honthorst. Elizabeth's brother Rupert fought for the Royalist cause in the English Civil War, and he was also one of the founders of the Hudson's Bay Company. He was also known for Rupert's exploding drops. Sophie, Elizabeth's younger sister, married the Elector of Brandenburg and was a patron of Leibniz, who tutored her daughter, Sophie Charlotte. I now want to talk about Elizabeth's correspondence with Descartes that extended from 1643 to 1650. You can have find images of the manuscript letters um, at the link on your screen. The manuscript, however, is a copy. The originals are lost. The letters are stored in the Rosendahl Castle in Arnhem, the Netherlands. The correspondence begins when Elizabeth writes to Descartes after reading his meditations. She has a question about how, given his dualist metaphysics, he can explain how mind and body causally interact. Fundamentally, her question is about causation. Descartes' account of causation in bodies requires physical contact of some kind, given that he thinks minds are immaterial and so have no surfaces to make physical contact. What kind of causation explains how a human mind causes changes in a human body? Descartes responds by introducing three primitive notions the primitive notion of mind, the primitive notion of body, and the primitive notion of the union of mind and body. Each of these primitive notions are used in explanations, while Descartes agrees that neither the notion of mind nor the notion of body can explain mind-body causal interaction, he suggests the notion of mind-body union can provide an explanation. Elizabeth was not satisfied with this response. She raises these two objections. Descartes is simply inconsistent. He dismissed the ability of a notion of mind-body union to explain how heaviness causes a body to fall. How can he appeal to it here? And second, he has not ruled out the possibility that the mind is immaterial. She writes, it's easier for me to concede matter and extension to the soul than to concede the capacity to move the body and to be moved by it to an immaterial thing. Descartes evades Elizabeth's objections. He simply asserts that we know by experience that mind can move the body. As Elizabeth puts it, I also find that the senses show me that the soul moves the body, but they teach me nothing of the way in which it does so. Elizabeth's question about the nature of causation between mind and body is left unanswered, at least in 1643. The correspondence between Elizabeth and Descartes does not stop in 1643. Here are some highlights. 
1644, Descartes and Elizabeth correspond about the geometrical problem of the three circles. And Elizabeth develops a solution that Descartes judges simpler than his own. In 1644, Descartes dedicates his principles of philosophy to Elizabeth. And in response, Elizabeth raises objections to some of the explanations of natural phenomena offered there. In 1645, Descartes and Elizabeth begin to read Seneca's De Vida Beata, or On the Blessed Life, together. And from there, Descartes develops his ethics, including his definition of virtue as being resolved to do what one judges to be the best. Elizabeth raises objections to Descartes' account of virtue, focusing on our regret when what we judge to be the best course of action turns out badly. Elizabeth commissions Descartes to write The Passions of the Soul, his last work. Throughout their correspondence, Elizabeth demonstrates not only her command of his philosophy, but also her connections to cutting edge mathematics and science of the period. I just said that Descartes dedicated his principles of philosophy to Elizabeth. Let me read one of the passages from that dedication. Descartes writes, I have even greater evidence of your powers, and this is special to myself, in the fact that you are the only person I have so far found who has completely understood all my previous published works. Many other people, even those of the utmost acumen and learning, find them very obscure, and it generally happens with almost everyone that they are if they are accomplished in metaphysics, they hate geometry. Well, if they have mastered geometry, they do not grasp what I have written on first philosophy. Your intellect is, to my knowledge, unique in finding everything equally clear. And this is why my use of the term incomparable is quite deserved. In 1660, Elizabeth moved to the Lutheran convent at Hereford in Germany, and in 1667 became its abbess. Elizabeth was there known not only for managing its lands and fostering an economic recovery after the Thirty Years' War, but also for welcoming some unconventional religious sects, including William Penn, a Quaker, and the Labadists, led by Jean Labadie and accompanied by Anna Maria von Squirman, whom Elizabeth knew from her time in The Hague. Elizabeth died at Hereford in 1680. Thanks for watching.